Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me. In this quick video, we're going to discuss a few forgotten prepping items and I'm gonna go over them with you so that way you can evaluate are your bases covered. So let's go. I have a smattering of a few things here and I'm going to discuss the first one here that I have and that is collagen. Now, let me turn it around this way. These are two actually kosher brands if you keep kosher. So these are legit kosher collagen brands. Why in the world would I include this in my preps? So let's evaluate what collagen is, right? Collagen is basically a protein that's rendered down. It's full of a whole bunch of amino acids, which you actually need if you're going to do muscle maintenance on a chemical level in your body at the small little cellular level. Your body needs a whole bunch of different amino acids in order to form proteins, right? And also to do basic maintenance on your cellular structures. This translates into recovering from strenuous activity and also supporting the body's healthy structures and maintenance thereof. So if we're looking at having things stored up in a long-term grid down scenario or in the intermediate areas where there's you know 30 days, 60 days of uncertainty, having quality protein sources that are shelf stable and jam packed with important available nutrients, that's very helpful. And so this is um, the vital proteins. I'll put links to these in the description box below. This is a more popular one. You guys have probably seen this out there, but most of them have the kosher label on there. So if you're looking into kosher bovine sources, this is one of them. There's also another one which um, I have available as well, that, or I have a link to that's available as well. And it's served me pretty well as well. So I got two of those here and they're both grass fed and kosher beef sources. Now the next one here is a whole protein powder and this is a vegan protein powder. I like the vegan protein powders because there are times when I don't want to use a meat source, for instance, an animal source of protein. And so Vega has been one of my go-to companies that I've really enjoyed. They are not sponsoring this video, by the way. Nobody sponsored me for any of this. I spent my own money to get it. So this is straight up legit untainted by, by bias as far as I'm concerned. So the Vega protein supplements, these are nice. Why would you consider having a a protein supplement or like a nutritional shake? Well, to put it bluntly, there are times when it is not reasonable from an energy expenditure standpoint to cook an entire meal or you need just a little something extra that's shelf stable. And that's one of the reasons why I like having whole meal replacement powders basically available to me in my supply storage. Now, granted, it's not gonna taste as good without ice. So if you're in the South and you're in a prolonged grid down, you're probably gonna have to be judicious about your ice usage, but these are nice just to have in stored. And I like this one because it's got the coffee and the energy, uh, or excuse me, has the caffeine for energy support as well as the protein. But Vega makes a whole bunch of different products and they have one also that's called the protein and greens, which is in my cabinet back there. And my windowsill will only hold so much. So that's why I didn't bust it out. But but all of their stuff I think is really good. And then the last point here, how exciting, coffee, yeah. Now I know there are those of you like my LDS folks and a lot of other folks who um, watch Don't Do Coffee, there is a backup option for those who want a jolt but can't do caffeine for whatever reason and that's Brigham Tea, which is basically nature's source of rip fuel. It's ephedra, no joke. And I'll put a link down there in the description box below to it. But Brigham tea is, is a legit herbal tea, uh, but it is caffeine free, but it is most definitely a stimulant and you do not need much of it. Let me attest to that. It makes a great pre-workout drink though. So I've got two, two coffee items here. The first one obviously is the whole bean because it's good to store whole beans as well. Granted, if, they're, if they are roasted, they're going to have a shelf life of their own as opposed to green coffee beans, which have a longer shelf life. The catch is though, when you've got traditional coffee, whether it's beans or whether it's ground coffee, you're gonna have to go through more prep work in order to use it, particularly if you've got whole beans. Now, if you're looking for an off-grid way to, to get your beans into usable place, they have hand crank coffee mills, which are totally legit and people have used them for a long time time, you know, in, in quite a long time past since I guess it was the Arabs who first, or the Bedouins that first brought the coffee to common usage. I've actually had coffee with Bedouins before. Granted, it was for a short period of time. But anyway, all that to say, there's a lot of prep work that goes into turning coffee beans into usable format. And I'll put a link to a meal that I have used in the past down there for you guys. The thing is, it's gonna take energy to do it and not everybody has that. Or you don't wanna go through all of it to get a usable cup. I store this in bulk. You can get this at 
Costco or any of your big box stores, but this is the Nescafe. And I actually got quite used to drinking this type of coffee when I was in Israel because that's pretty much what everybody drinks. Instant coffee is the way that things are over there. But here's the nice thing about instant coffee. And for those of you coffee snobs out there, don't hate on me. I'm just trying to love and support you. So the nice thing about the Nescafe, and they make a whole bunch of different varieties. This one and the French roast are my favorite. But the Nescafe instant coffee is helpful because if you want to make iced coffee, for instance, you don't have to brew it and then wait for it to cool down. You have it powdered. It's ready to go. Also, if you are in need of a quick jolt to keep you awake, there's always just a spoonful, which is pretty nasty tasting, but it works. And I have this stored in bulk for many different reasons, um, but actually foremost of which is a helpful hedge against inflation. I'm kind of the type of person that I view, and this is not investment advice, right? Talk to your financial advisor, blah, blah, blah. But in my own personal outlook on things, if we are looking at a time and a place where inflation is increasingly a possibility, then there's only so much that you're gonna do from like a traditional portfolio viewpoint, at least in the way that I view it for my own life. You know, there's only so much that you can do in precious metals, there's only so much that you can do in commodities, there's only so much that you can do in blah. But I wanna know that I can perpetuate my standard of living comfortably and be able to be a source of blessing to people around me. And let me tell you, when your morale is low and when you're having a rough day, having a nice cup of coffee, very, very helpful. I know that unless something drastically changes with my life, that I'm probably going to be consuming coffee indefinitely for the rest of my life. May I live to 120, say amen. So for me, having plenty of coffee stored up is a wise thing because I know I'm gonna drink it anyway. I know that I'm going to enjoy it and it's something that lots of other people enjoy and are willing to pay for dearly as evidenced by Starbucks and other large coffee chains' bottom line. Now a note here practically about coffee. Coffee is indeed, because of its profit margin associated, a very heavily pesticided crop internationally. So if that's something that you're concerned about, this may be a good reason to go organic, but also there are small farmer owned cooperatives that allow you to be more choosy as far as what goes into your body. And so you can do that as well. These are just options that I wanted to discuss with you. So that way you get your mind jogged just a little bit. Cause I know a lot of people may have the ground coffee stored or they may have little bits of instant coffee stored. But for me at any given time, I have at least a year's worth of coffee stored, probably upwards of two. <laughs> it's hard to, mo to moderate oneself. You know, whenever you get into stressful times, you're like, must have coffee. I'm gonna be up late, must have coffee. So for me, at least a year, usually upwards of two for me stored up with instant coffee because that's what I like. So I hope these were helpful tips to you guys. Like I said, I got links in the description box below to the items that I've covered today. And I hope it was a blessing for you. If you enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also support me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency and PayPal. I'll have links below. If you'd like to train with me in person and online, I have two options online. You can go to the Patriot Nurse Academy. It's a four hour class, it's $129. If you wanna train with me in person, you can check out the full schedule of my course offerings at thepatriotnurse.com. I'm going to Knoxville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, uh, Grand Rapids, Indianapolis, Philadelphia, and uh, Lord willing, I'll be adding a Texas class later this year and potentially a Phoenix class, so stay tuned to that. If you wanna train four days, you got two options, the Knoxville, Tennessee class here in a couple weeks, and then also Salt Lake City is gonna be a four day class. And for my LDS folks, um, that is a Monday through, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday class. That's a Monday through Thursday class. Most of my classes that are four days are Sunday through Wednesday. That one is a Monday through Thursday. So I hope it was helpful for you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off. I'll see you later. Bye.